And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Rosalind Russell in Elliot Lewis's production of When the Bow Breaks, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I remember the scent of our garden. I remember when we used to swing me in the evening before supper and the honeysuckle, sweet, drifting about us. We were happy, weren't we? Not like the sadness that came afterwards and the bitter taste that isn't the taste of honeysuckle. Why am I dying, Grandfather? Where are you? Hold my hand and I shan't be afraid of the dark. Afraid of Harry standing there so close. This dark, angry face looking down at me. You've got to get hold of yourself, Evie. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, all right. This is no good. Don't you see what Corcoran wants? If he can get us at each other's throats, he'll have us and his lousy story. But I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. How can you think such a thing? You've got to get straightened out. The way you are now, you'll spill over the first time anyone puts pressure on you. I won't, Harry, honestly. I'll never say a word. I won't. I just want to be happy with you. I want you to love me. Sure, baby, sure. But you've got to understand, like Cochran says, it's my neck now, not yours. We've got to be careful. Harry, maybe if I went away somewhere, alone, maybe I could rest and forget the trial and, and go somewhere and rest. I'll come back. You wouldn't have to worry about me saying anything. No, stop Everything it. will be all right when I come back. You'll let me go, won't you, Harry? You wouldn't do anything to stop me. Harry! Shut Harry! Up, Harry! You... Oh. Cut it out! Oh, honey, I... I didn't want to do that. You, you've got to believe me, I didn't... When you see what you like, I've got to watch you, take care of you. You hit me. Nobody ever hit me. Ever. It's all right, it's all right, Mom. Don't touch me, don't! There you see, all of a sudden you're afraid of me, and it's just because of that Corcoran guy who... Look, you mustn't be afraid of me. We're in the clear, don't you see? It's all downhill now. Your grandfather was already dying, only we didn't know it. So when we when, when we did what we did, then luck was with us. So we're in the clear. They couldn't prove anything against you then. They can't now. I've always been afraid of you. I've always done what you wanted me to do. Part of it was because I loved you. But most of it because I'm afraid. You never let anything get in your way. Grandfather was in your way. Now maybe it's me. Are you saying that this was all my idea? Are you saying that you never asked me to help you get rid of the old man? Oh, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm tired. Yeah, that's it. You're tired. Well, you make me a drink. I'll get the bags out of the car. You've got to start getting domestic, Mousy. You're, you're an old married woman now. He went out to get the suitcases, but left the front door open. It was too cold to leave the door open. He wanted it that way so that he could see me or hear me if I picked up the telephone. You mustn't laugh when I tell you that in the middle of the living room standing there, I felt the same way I did when you punished me. When you used to put me in the hall closet and make me stand in the dark with the door closed. I must have been a very naughty little girl sometimes. Is that why I killed you, Grandfather? That night I had a dream. It was a funny dream. There was an enormous alarm clock in the middle of a field. The sun was shining and you and I were dancing in time to the ticking of the clock. Then, then Harry came along and he tried to dance too, but he was clumsy and tripped and fell down. He waved his arms and his mouth went open and shut, but we couldn't hear him because of the ticking. (laughs) Oh, we laughed so hard. Funny. Harry. Oh, nothing. No, nothing. It was just a dream. Yeah, well, tell me about it. Well, I can't. I, I don't remember. It was just funny. You didn't sound like you were asleep. Well, I was. Really, I was. Maybe you figured out a way to tip off Corcoran about me, eh? Maybe that's what no, was funny. No, no, Harry, it was a dream. You haven't but... been kidding me. Why do you think I've watched you every minute? I know what's on your oh, mind. you're wrong. I thought we were happy. With what you're holding over my head? With what you can do to me? Are you kidding? Now, listen. I haven't slept since the trial, and you know why? Because I'm afraid of you. Every time we go to the store, every time we go out anywhere, I'm waiting for you to run. Call the cops. I wouldn't. You know I wouldn't. I never even thought of it. Not since... Not since yesterday? 
Well, you thought of it plenty then, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes. No, no. Mm. Oh, Harry. Now you're laughing because you figure you can get rid of me. No, no, no. No, no, you're right. Don't kid yourself. I figured out the whole thing. I got us in the clear. And now you want to mess it what, up. What are you going to do to me? You're going to... You... Oh, I don't know. It depends, baby. It depends on whether you can keep your mouth shut. Why did we do it? Why did we kill him? You wanted the money. No, no, you don't understand. I wanted to get away from him, and I wanted you. But I'm not away. All right, Marcy, all right. But we did it, and now we've got to follow it through. You didn't want me without the money. You didn't want me at all. Just the money. You don't love me. It happens I do. It's something you can't understand, huh? I've tried to make you believe me, and and something like this comes up, and I'm I'm afraid of you. I, I keep remembering that if you want to, you can send me to the chair. Hurry, I wouldn't. I could never hurt you. Don't worry. You won't. I'm going to watch and see that you don't. Now you better get back to sleep. The next day, he didn't talk to me at all. He didn't say a word. We just sat around the house and I felt ugly. I prayed I, I'd suddenly be beautiful because then he'd trust me. And he'd know that I wouldn't hurt him. It was after lunch that he went into the kitchen. I wanted to watch him now just as he was watching me. I couldn't bear to have him out of my sight. Supposing he went out the back door, around the front and crept up quietly behind me. I got up. Stood behind the dining room door looking through the crack. He was taking down a vial from the closet where he kept his photographic things. I couldn't see a label, but I knew what it was. He put the vial in his jacket pocket and closed the closet. I was going to be murdered with cyanide the way you were, Grandfather. You stay here and keep quiet. I'll answer the door. I don't want to hear a sound out of you. I'm your Daily Times delivery boy, and I've come to welcome you into our community. Yeah, sure, okay, some other time, huh? As a service to you so that you may keep abreast of world events, your newspaper, the Daily Times... Now, look, buddy, we don't need a paper. Go peddle them somewhere else. Please call someone. Tell the police Sorry, kid, we're not interested. Shut up, shut up. (laughs) I'll get back in the living room. I should have known it. Oh, you crazy... I ought to kill you for trying that. I ought to kill you. Kill. Kill me. That's what he's going to do. I had to get away or use the phone. Call the police. I needed your grandfather. I needed you to help me. He walked slowly back into the living room and took off his jacket. I thought how funny it was. Just like a man before a fight. Perhaps he thought I'd fight with him to save my life. What is it like to die, Grandfather? I used to ask you that when I was little. When Dad died. It's hot in here. I'm going to have a drink. I fixed the phone so you can forget that. I'll only be in the kitchen so I can hear you. Don't try anything. Now he was going to use it for cyanide. He hadn't taken it out of his jacket pocket. It was still there. I knew it was. I heard him open the refrigerator and get out spice. I didn't even have to get up. I could reach his jacket from where I sat. I was very careful. Used my handkerchief to get the vial out. I'd learned about fingerprints during the trial. I knew just how much to put in a drink so that it wouldn't taste. Harry had taught me that. I was reaching for the cork in the whiskey bottle when I heard him coming back. 